Welcome back, peeps. So we asked you guys what you thought of our next story, which is with a minister who happens to be gay. The response was huge. Being a high-profile person within a congregation, you'll always suffer prejudices regardless of your sexual orientation. Aren't you annoyed that everyone asks you about your sexual orientation instead of asking you what you're doing as a minister? My understanding is in the Bible, it's not your title, job, sexuality, or place of worship that you'll be accepted into heaven. It's if he's in your heart. Clearly, there's a lot to find out, so you guys come with me to meet Reverend Tony Franklin. Reverend, it's really nice to be here with you today, especially when I don't have anything guilty to admit. You sure? <laughs> yeah, I'm have you sure. Got time? <laughs> Which church do you belong to? I am ordained and minister within the Methodist Church, uh, but I also am involved with a community church called Auckland Community Church. That's been very much part of my life and my journey in becoming a minister. Uh, and so I work between the two. They say that the church is the body of Christ. So what does that make you? Part of the body of Christ. Well, St. Paul is famous for writing about the body of Christ. And uh, he would say that uh, in the body of Christ there's neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, circumcised nor uncircumcised. And therefore all the diversity of humanity is part of the body of Christ. Right. So what was it that really drew your heart into wanting to be a minister? Uh, the spirituality of being a Christian and helping people, working with people, guiding people, walking alongside people who are trying to explore for themselves their own spirituality. And what are some of the principles that you have chosen to guide your journey as a minister? If I was to have a, a signature verse, it's uh, from John 10, 10, I've come that you may have life and have life in abundance. I think that's very much part of the gospel message, what Jesus is about. Uh, life will win out over death and love will win out over hate. Why is there controversy over there being a gay minister in a church? It often comes into debates around understandings of scripture and understanding of, of Christianity. Did it ever make you scared of entering the ministry, thinking people are gonna say, this is not right? Yes, it does. It does make it uh, slightly scarier. Um, How did you overcome that? Uh, I've just boxed on with it, basically. Uh, I haven't actually had uh, many people say to me personally, you are not acceptable as a minister. You cannot be my minister. Uh, that has not been part of my experience so far, thanks be to God. Uh, for some people, that has been the situation. And it does still happen in some contexts. It does st still happen here and around the world. Mm. And uh, it's not easy to hear that. Um, but, um, yeah. Does it actually say in the Bible that it's a sin to be gay? I would say no. It does not say it is a sin. There are uh, aspects of scripture where when we try to work through the translation of language from either ancient Hebrew or ancient Greek, we try and work out what does that word mean for us now. Um, there is that issue. There is issue of culture differences between 2,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago and now. If one wanted to go further, there are aspects of the First Testament or the Old Testament which talk about purity laws, uh, tattoos, were outlawed as part of the Hebrew purity laws. But I bet you we would not hear many churches, certainly not many Pacifica churches, that would say we need to enforce that aspect of purity law. Mm -hmm. So why do we pick a purity law around uh, ancient understandings of sexuality and not critique other purity laws? We had a few questions come through for you from our Facebook family. Are you the only gay minister in New Zealand? Thanks be to God, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> A lot of people keep asking, do gay people go to heaven? Yes, I believe so. Uh, but ultimately, of course, that is God's will that decides who goes to heaven. Do you think you're going to heaven? I believe so. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rugby or league? Neither, Aussie rules actually. <laughs> Beyonce or Susan Boyle? 
Oh, now that's a bit tricky. <laughs> Beyonce. Beyonce. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> collar or tie? Collar. I prefer to wear the collar to the tie now. All yes. Right. Uh, partly because I wore the tie when I was an accountant. Oh, right. Let go of that life. I've let go of that life. <laughs> <laughs> Just to end off, I thought I'd read a comment from someone that when I read it, it made me teary-eyed and it kind of shows how grateful I am to be here with you today. And it says, I think this man's amazing and I encourage him to unlock the locks tied over many men and women on earth today. He may not be your shepherd, yet he is someone else's. If we have discrimination and banter, it only delays him from serving our God, saving our people and our culture. I'm all for this man. Amen. Amen. Goes back to John 10.10. I've come that you may have life and have life in abundance. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks for your feedback, guys, on that story. We love to ask you questions and let you have your say. So keep them coming. That's right. Now, coming up after the break, I take Jesse Sheehan on a tour of Okilangi, semi soft stars. And then Mike checks out special effects in a flame edit suite. <laughs> Well, we won't be doing that with a computer. Pacific Beach.